Okay, so um, I'll take you through how I created the front cover image, which requires a cutout of the lady's hair from a background so that we can show through the Take a Break logo type as well. Now, to show you how this um, first comes about, we really have to start in InDesign because we need a good, accurate size for the image that needs to go on the front cover. So I'll hide the text layer. I'll go to the images layer, make sure that everything is unlocked. Um, in fact, I can just go up to object and choose unlock all on spread. And then I'm going to hide everything in here by dragging down. And hide that one as well. And that leaves us with these shapes here. Now the rectangle is actually the red box there. So um, hide the top one and there we go. So that's the flat full image with everything in there. It's the only piece of artwork visible now. So um, the first step that I took is if I just move this to the side, I needed to know what kind of image size I was going to have to create. So the simplest and, and most effective way to do that is to pick up your rectangular frame tool, which contains no printable characteristics. If you leave it in the document by accident, you're not going to get punished for it in print, but it just allows you then to here. If I go up to the top right corner of the bleed, click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down, drag all the way down to the bottom bleed line and then snap to the center of the spine in there for the cover. I'm just going to switch to my uh, move tool and then just make sure that that does snap out all to the edges just panning around in here. So yep, yeah, that's all good. Um, I don't even have to take a note of the dimensions in there because all you have to do is choose edit and copy. And then if I dive over to Photoshop, we can use that as the basis for the canvas size. So here I have the original image downloaded from Unsplash. And the first step then really is to go to file and choose new. Notice here that Photoshop gives me the clipboard. So that is the size, the width and height of what I've just copied inside of InDesign. Then what I'll do is um, I'm going to go over here to where it reads uh, in pixels. Uh, so I have to change that to millimeters and that then translates that into the exact size that I need for the cover. Change the resolution to 300. Um, the colors will be made into uh, red, green and blue colors, which is fine. So stuff inside of Photoshop, um, unless told otherwise, create your artwork in RGB mode and then you'll convert to CMYK inside of other applications like InDesign when you export to PDF. This gives you the most flexibility. Um, with that done, and uh, then from here, go down to the bottom and then click Create. And we get a blank canvas, but we know now that when we put artwork in here, that this is going to help in terms of sizing and juxtaposing because it's exactly the right size that we need. And then from here, um, I will go back to this image in here and I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the, the masking out in here first of all, because that will, again, it's the quickest way to do it. So I need to create a basic selection around this lady. Um, now, if I go to say, for example, my magic wand, magic wand might help in this case. It's probably one of the quicker ones to choose, especially if you've got an older version of Photoshop, um, you'd have to use the magic wand tool. Um, but if I just show you here that if I click on the magic wand up at the top, there is an op option called select subject. If you do have the 2018 or the 2019 version of Photoshop, at least, um, obviously a new, the newer the version, the better, then you'll have an option there called select subject where you'll be able to left click on select subject. And it pretty much does what it says. So that will put a selection, a very rough one around the outside. Don't worry about the hair because that's what we're going to deal with in the second dialog box, but you'll want to then just go around and tidy that up. So around here, there's a bit of uh, the, the, the sweater missing. So in this case, I'm going to go to the lasso tool, make sure that I change the mode to add to selection. And then from here, hover over, click and hold down the mouse, keep the mouse held down the whole time, drag very carefully, to match the edge of the bit that's missing and draw a loop around it and let go. And it adds it in there. Um, and then I'll just go around here. So this one needs removing. There's a little bit of the background in there. So I'll switch to the subtract from selection tool and I'll put a, a careful again, just going around the edge of that in there, a loop around the bit I want to remove. Notice that I'm not going on for any part of the sweater in there. When I let go of the mouse, it takes it away. So it's just a case of panning along in here and making sure that your, your base selection, the very, very rough one, 
is as accurate as it can be in there. So yeah, that's all fine. Over to the other side and just making sure I've got the space bar held down here. There we go. There's a, an issue. So that, that needs adding in. So again, make sure I switch back to the mode for add to selection. And again, just click and hold down the mouse, drag along the edge, the critical bit, and then work on the inside to add something to the selection and let go. Hold down the space bar, pan along, just making sure that this is as good as we can get it to be. Um, now in here, don't worry too much about the hair. So I would tend to suggest you need to give someone a very tight haircut. So I'm going to make sure the mode is set to subtract from selection and then click and hold down and just remove all of the fine strands of hair from that selection. Go around the outside, let go of the mouse. We need to edit the hair and bring that hair back in again in a more sophisticated dialog box, which is called select and mask. So we will do that as a second step again around here. Just get rid of all the, the large bits of hair that have a lot of the background showing through again, just drag through this bit in here and then let go just to take that off. And with that done, we are about ready for the second stage. Oh, don't forget that gap underneath the arm. So that will need removing from selection. So again, the mode is correct up here, remove because it's currently included in the selection. So again, click and hold down the mouse, drag along there, just matching this back up. And then once you reach the start point, let go and that removes it from selection. So now I think with confidence, we are ready to carry on. So from here, providing you have any one of the selection tools in this region, of the tools panel active, you will see a button called select a mask. Left click on that and it takes you into a completely different set of tools, which um, the tools are found on the left hand side of the interface. And then on the right hand side of the interface is where you start with some sliders and options. So you will probably find that it gives you this a very faint uh, impression of the bit that's been hidden in there. So the, the aim of this is to get a more refined, better quality selection along the edges of the subject. So I would suggest that you pick a very contrasting color to the background. Now the background in this image is pink. So I'm going to change the mode at the top. The very first thing to do to something called overlay, and that will put a color over the area that is hidden at the moment, and that will be excluded from the final selection. Um, you'll probably find that is set to something like 50%. That's not really any good. I would tend to say that you really need to just drag that up to 100 and then click in the box for color and pick something very, very different to the pink in there. So I might go green, for example, because if any of the background shows through here against the green, the pink is going to show up very, very clearly. And then click OK. Um, I'll then increase the radius. So the radius is the area that you are editing. So I'm just going to change that to two pixels and then turn on smart radius. And that will determine whether the edges of the subject need to be harder or softer, and it will adapt it around the edge of the current selection in there. So again, it's just helping refine things. Um, with that done, then I will zoom out and focus on the hair. So I'm going to go to um, this tool here kind of looks like a um, so a clump of hair, that's the one you need. It's called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Click on that one, and then we want to add content in there. So I'm going to make sure that I expand the detection area, which is a plus, but we need the brush size to be a lot bigger in here because if I show you there, it looks pretty tiny. So increase the size of that one up to, let's go, yeah, somewhere between 90 and 100 should be fine in there. I press return, and then I'm going to hover my cursor in the region where all the solid green is that the, the region that indicates where we've lost content. So I'm going to click and hold down the mouse and just drag. And that will just you, what you're supposed to do with this is this is a, a tool for detecting finer details, drag across there, try not to run over the solid clumps of hair because this tool is meant for trying to find details. You'll tend to find it will make the edges of your hair very soft and transparent and see through you don't want that. So click and hold down the mouse with the space bar to pan and just drag from the outside in towards where the hair is and then along the edge just to pluck out any bits of missing hair in there. And it will also then reveal any colors that matches the inside of the subject. And it will then also try and hide any colors that don't match the subject. Again, drag down here. There's quite a lot of hair missing from here. So we'll just drag over that in here. 
over there. There's a little bit on the shoulder and just down there. I mean, you know, don't go too crazy with this. You know, some hair you just have to accept. You give some somebody a digital haircut. I would tend to say that if this was for a, a proper retouching job, you would get rid of all the fine strands of hair in there and just go with the larger curls of hair. Um, but just to show you the, the power of this tool, you know, it's it's very, very handy. It's great for masking hair. So with that done, I think we've got the bulk of that um, sorted in there for the hair. Then you divert your attention to the right hand side of the dialog box. So smoothing and feathering are all about softening the selection. So smooth, smoothing will melt the selection edges. No, we don't want that. And we also don't want to soften them. We want a nice crisp edge. So if I just change the preview in here to black and white, if I press return there to make that disappear, um, smooth, if I drag that up, you'll see that we lose a lot of detail. You have to be very patient with it. And it starts smoothing it out, as it says. So set that back to zero. And then feather will just soften the edges. Um, we don't want that. So remembering, of course, that in Photoshop, when you are hiding, you're using a mask, black conceals, white reveals. So this is no good because it's not accurate anymore. So those two set to zero. Then I dare say you go to contrast and just increase contrast somewhere between um, naught to 10%, just to tighten up the white and the black in there. We don't want any kind of loose selection, so that can help. No more than 10% in most cases I tend to find works well. Then you have something called shift edges. So if you drag this slider to the right hand side, it will expand the X of the selection and, and it will grow. So generally speaking, you'll want to then just switch your mode at the top back to overlay. So you can see a nice representation of the image with any potential background colors in there. Notice that if I drag this towards the right hand side, we start to get some of the color from the background in there. So growing is no good. Generally with a selection, you shrink. And again, you won't need that much. Um, because if you drag it too much, you're going to lose some of the details in the hair in there. And the hair's going to start breaking apart and you get floaty hair and stuff, which is no good. So mindset there to minus 7%. I dare say that is probably enough. So with that done, then what I can do is go down to the bottom and click on OK. And that will then put back into Photoshop an enhanced version of my selection. So um, from here, then, if I just pull the layers panel out, um, and then going to um, drag the layer down to the new icon down here to create a duplicate. And I want to keep uh, one version intact in there. And then I'm going to choose to apply a layer mask. Now, if I hide the background layer, there we go. The background is now gone in our version in here. So if I call this layer lady, no BKG, that should make sense, particularly when we're altering the layers inside of InDesign and we can't see the physical layers. We only see a description for them. Um, and then with that done, we need to put a new background in there and we need to move this across. So I'm going to switch to my selection tool at the top up here, the move tool. I'm then going to uh, right click on that layer and then choose duplicate layer, send that across to the untitled file in there and then click OK. So the document that we made, which is exactly the right size here, then we have um, the, the, the lady dropped into that document in there. Now she's a little bit small. Now what we will need to do is scale this in size. So I'm just going to zoom out a touch. And then go to edit and choose free transform. I'm then going to hover over and scale this up. Now, um, notice that in the options bar at the top, I have the width and the height fields linked together. You'll need to make sure you do the same. Otherwise you're going to distort the image. And we definitely, definitely don't want that. So she needs to be, have about a little gap above her head there. And then if I just move this to the side, this is going to give us enough room to have all the text and things down the side in here. And that should be positioned about right. Press the return key to apply the edit. Now that the, the lady is positioned in here, what I can then do is uh, delete the background. So I can click on the delete button in there and it'll ask me if I want to delete it. Yes, I do. Um, I'm going to then duplicate this layer by dragging it down to the new icon where my cursor is to create a duplicate. Double left click, just set the name in there back to what it should be. And then I'm going to just full image for that one, press the return key on the keyboard. And then from here, what I need to do is to uh, right click on that and choose delete layer mask. 
and that puts the background back in again in there. So from here then, what I need to do is, um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I mean, if you, if you were concerned about that gap in there, it is ultimately going to be replaced. And if you wanted to get that gap back in there, I could hide that layer and make sure the full image layer is selected in the layers panel, switch to my rectangular marquee tool and then drag over and select that strip in there like so. And then from here, go to edit, choose fill. And then it's set to content aware to replace that selected area. Click OK. And if we're lucky, it'll do a very, very good job. We might get a little bit of replication of the, uh, yeah, there. a little bit of elbow and things like that. So you can always go to select, deselect, and then if I put a, a rectangular selection over that bit that we don't want, then I can switch to the patch tool. Um, and then from here, I can choose um, hover over and then click and drag. And you can just sample a different part of the image, maybe underneath like so to get rid of it. Um, and again, if I pick up my rectangular marquee tool and select this portion, again, I can go back to my patch tool hover over, click and drag, pick a different part of the image in there to replace it with, and it's gone. Select, deselect. Um, so yeah, we've got a full image now in one layer. I am going to lock that. So at the top of here, I'm going to choose to lock that layer so we don't move it or uh, edit it in any way. That needs to stay as it is. I'm going to leave the visibility on for that one. And then I need to add a new gradient, which replace the color in the background because it looks a bit, a bit kind of dark and the colors aren't great. It's a bit grainy. So a nice vibrant color in there. To do that, I'm going to click on the panel menu down at the bottom and then choose gradient. This is going to put a completely new layer above the original in there called full image. And then what I'm going to do is um, for this one, um, I'm going to click in the menu that pops down in here. Make sure that this is set to basic and then choose foreground to background. So it'll be the very first one in here that you'll see. Maybe this menu, it, it looks like this is expanded with all the little thumbnails in here. That it will probably be the very first one you'll see in the top left hand side of the pop out, but uh, it needs to read foreground to background um, and click away from there. And then I'm just going to change the angle like so. Like that. And then you can actually change the colors itself because obviously that doesn't look pink. But if I click in there, then you go to the gradient editor and the colors controlled at the bottom by these two stops. So you've got the black and you've got the white. Um, I'm going to go first of all uh, and click on the black one. That then activates the color stop, its controls. If I click in the box where the color is, you can specify a new color. So I'm going to set a, an, an RGB in here. So this one is going to be 252, hit the tab key. 151, hit the tab key again, and the final one is 223 in there. So we get that pink color and then click OK, go to the far end where it's white, click in that one and then click in its color box to change its properties. So with that one, that's going to be 187, hit the tab key 86 and then hit the tab key again. And that one's going to be 168 in there like so. Click OK. And now that we have that in there, we can then go and click on OK. That's our gradient layer. Click OK to the other dialog box as well. And then you can finally turn on the layer where the lady's cut out. So we have in here now the lady cut out on her own. We've got a new background inside of there. So with that done, we can go to file. We can choose save. I'm going to save this to the desktop to my take a break links folder and call this new cover. Click on save and then jump back to InDesign. So if I delete this image, and then if I also turn on the other one as well and delete that one, now we do have the red rectangle in there, which we need to have visible, of course. So now if I go to File and then choose Place, uh, back on the desktop, take a break, Links, and then New Cover, Show Import Options, and I'll click on Open, turn off Lady No Background, and then click OK and then go up to the top up here. Just make sure you don't click inside the red box and it might even be worth just going to where the rectangle is. Click on that to lock it and then hover in the same place. Left click to drop that in there and you will notice that it is exactly the right size in there, which is perfect. And then what we do is um, that will be dropped in uh, new cover that needs to be down here underneath the red rectangle. So we get the cover in there and um, the, the rectangle. And then 
Uh, with that photograph still selected, go to edit, then choose copy and then choose edit and paste in place. And that puts it in front of the rectangle. Just drag this down a touch because the two, the three things need to be together and usually right at the bottom, at the very back of the composition. Um, so I'm going to lock the original one that has just the, um, uh, the background color in it. And then from here, just click back on the copy, go to object, go down to object layer options, turn on this layer, turn off the other two and then click on OK. And there we have it. She is now cut out against the background. And then we have, if I just turn everything on again in here, so object, show all on spread. And then if I turn my text layer on, there we have it. So that is how you create a cutout of somebody, even with challenging details in like the hair and things like that. And that finishes off. Take a break.